According to Rolling Stone magazine, in an article released on November 26, 2021, on April 28, 2021, Miguel Lamboya walked into a Salida police department and told authorities that they could find an enshrined, mummified corpse, formerly Amy Carlson, in his house in Crestone, Colorado. Officers documented Lamboya's full report in an affidavit in which his association with the group is downplayed, describing the followers living in his house on and off for years as people who temporarily needed a place to stay. He apparently had no knowledge of Amy's death or how her corpse, she had died in California, ended up in his Colorado home. The article goes on to state that when the county police arrived at Lamboya's house in Crestone, they found Carlson immediately. They could see the twinkling, multicolored, makeshift shrine from down the hallway. The scent of sage hung in the air, according to an officer on the scene. The room was decorated much like a child's bedroom, with rainbows and hearts and stars. A few stuffed bunny toys perched atop the mantle above Carlson's body, as if keeping vigil. She sat atop the bed, wrapped in what appeared to be a sleeping bag, and decorated with Christmas lights. Her body was in the advanced state of decomposition. Her eyes had deteriorated to the point that they appeared to be missing entirely, and the area around the empty sockets had been dusted with glitter makeup. Her lips had receded, causing her teeth to protrude from her mouth. The article continues to say seven of Amy's followers were present, along with two sleeping children, including Lamboy's two-year-old son. Seven of Amy's followers were arrested and charged with abuse of a corpse and child abuse. All the charges would later be dropped. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without your support, we would not be able to do what we do. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be talking about Love Has One. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I have filmed this and refilmed this multiple times. In my opinion, this is a very sensitive topic because not only are we talking about human lives that got lost in delusion, but we're also looking at a lot of truth that got mixed in with a lot of abuse. And I do feel like that these are super important things to discuss. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that we talk a lot about how the darkness cannot create anything. This is not only something that is spoken about in books like The Law of One, but this is also something that science speaks about as well. Again, look at the process of photosynthesis. Darkness literally cannot create anything. The only thing that can create something is the light. So what does the darkness do? It takes from the light and it inverts it, or it mimics it. And when we move into this new age of Aquarius, as many of us are going through this great awakening of challenging the programming that we were brought up in, and whatever respective religion you were raised in, we have to understand that there are a lot of con artists out there. There are a lot of narcissists out there who will regurgitate some of the truths that you know to be true, but will invert them and use those truths as a weapon to control you and feed off of you. And then what happens once the feeding process has finished or once the cult or the narcissist is shut down is that people then have a very negative view of the truths that were spoken in the cult to begin with. We're going to see this with, with, with organizations like Scientology, like Nexium, like Teal Swan, and of course, with our topic today, 
with love as one. And so for many people in this new dawning of a new age, as you start to go out there and you start to look for the truth and the truth starts to appear, the story starts to appear before you, I beg of you to be very careful with who you give your power to. As we go through the story of Love is One and Amy Carlson, we are going to look at some red flags that show you that this is a cult. This is not a healthy group to be a part of. They might be speaking the truth in a lot of ways, but their mission is skewed. In any type of healthy spiritual community, you will have a leader or a teacher, a guru. But in a healthy spiritual community, that leader, teacher, or guru will be in charge when it comes to teaching the material, but will also back away when it comes to you and your choices. If you go to YouTube today to look up the Lo Love Has One YouTube page, you will find that they have changed their name to 5D Full Disclosure. Now, this is important because the Love Has One cult grew off of YouTube. And we know in our own truther community, if that's what you want to call it, that there are many nefarious players out here in our truther community on YouTube who show some of the same personality tactics, same mind control tactics that the controllers use and that cult leaders use. Now, the Love is One cult would live stream on YouTube and Facebook twice a day where they would raise funds for their organization. Now, Love Has One is technically a 501c3, so it's technically a not-for-profit, not non-profit governmental agency, just like the church, just like a lot of religions here in the United States. This means that they are tax-exempt. This also means that if they wanted to, they could file for grants from the United States government. Now, when I first started studying the Love Is One cult, and I realized that they were teaching some of the same things that we all believe in on this channel. My first impression was that Amy Carlson herself was just a crazy person who went a little bit delusional in her thoughts. And even though she might have hurt a lot of people within her inner circle, she wasn't a psyop. But as I started to really dig deep into the timeline of this cult, I'm not so sure anymore because again you're gonna see that a lot of what they teach mirrors a lot of what we talk about on this channel as well as other channels but in on this channel as well as other channels that are healthy channels we don't demand full obedience we don't demand lionization in fact i've told you guys many times i don't like be careful lionizing people be careful love bombing people Everyone I know on YouTube that I'm close to and that I collaborate with are not looking to start any type of organization. They just want to help. They just want to create community for like-minded people. And that's, that's the crux, right? When you start to wake up to the truth and you start to deprogram from what you were raised in, for whatever religion you were raised in, you feel lonely. I understand that. As human beings, we are tribal communal people we need family we need community and when we start questioning our original our family of origin when we start questioning our community that we were born into we're, we're seeking to find a new community and in that seeking we can get to a place of being very very vulnerable now cults are not they're not selective to to just certain people any, it is my belief that any human being at any point in their life can be vulnerable to a cult, especially if you've gone something through something horrific, like you've been, you know, kicked out of your family for not getting the zapper or, or you've, you know, been kicked out of your family because you have different religious beliefs or you feel strange because you're seeing life differently than maybe those who are around you. And so we're vulnerable, we're lonely, we want that community. And so it's very easy for us to fall into these organizations that we think are our new family. And then before we know it, we're stuck in a high controlled organization. One thing that a lot of cults have in common is a charismatic leader. And we're gonna see that with Amy Carlson. Now where I believe a lot of this cult's belief and my beliefs differ 
is that I don't believe Amy Carlson is Mother God. You see, this cult believes that Amy Carlson is a woman who is the incarnation of God. She is, again, Mother God. And that Amy Carlson was came to Earth at this time to defeat the cabal. And that Amy Carlson and Amy Carlson alone is responsible for getting 144,000 souls into the fifth dimension. Now, it's hard to say. I don't want to say Amy Carlson isn't God because we're all fractals of God. And that's what I want to express throughout as we talk about the story. What I want you to keep in mind, no one's coming to save you. Now, sometimes when we're feeling vulnerable and there's a charismatic, narcissistic leader, we can get swept away in their story, in their charismatic story. We can get love bombed by them. We think they're going to fix everything for us. And that's the first mistake. Because in true spirituality, we learn that we we are responsible for saving ourselves. We're all familiar with the phrase, the term, the title, Galactic Federation of Light. We have heard that multiple times on multiple channels during this Great Awakening. However, in 2009, a YouTube channel was opened called the Galactic Federation of Light. And they released a video that said, Father God speaks to humanity. It is believed that the voice behind this video was a man named Amrith White Eagle. Amrith White Eagle, three years earlier, met a woman named Amy Carlson on an internet board called lightworkers.org. Now, a lot of this stuff that I'm going to talk about in this timeline of the creation of this cult no longer exists. And I do, I'm going to put a lot of links down in the description box below of different resource materials I used to look into this cult because you have to kind of piece the puzzles. You have to put the puzzle pieces together very carefully because there's so many different stories out there. But from what we know, Amy Carlson, back in 2006, started posting a lot on this 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 board on the Internet. Now, think about 2006. In 2006, the Internet was still quite new. I think we all still had like flip phones at that time. I don't even think the iPhone was out at that time. But around that time, Carlson was diving into the world of spiritualities. She herself was from Dallas, Texas, and had had three different marriages and had three children from three different fathers all before she had turned 30. Now, as Carlson became a regular poster on this back channel, this board on the Internet, Amrith White Eagle struck up a relationship with her. In 2006, she came, became convinced that she herself was Mother God and that she had been sent here to Earth to defeat the Cabal. She also became convinced that Amrith White Eagle himself was Father God. She was Mother God. He was Father God. Now, as we'll see in this story, he would be the first of many Father Gods, We'll get into that. And in 2007, she left her children and moved to Colorado to join Father God, Amrith White Eagle, on their mission. Now, I will put a link down in the description box below with her interview with Dr. Phil, where she speaks about her decision to go on this mission to save humanity, that she she doesn't really see it as abandoning her children. She just had to choose the, the heavenly mission for all of us peasants. Now, by 2009, when they started posting on their YouTube channel, they seemed harmless enough. They were just talking about spirituality, all that kind of stuff. Again, the same things that we talk about on our channel. And in fact, on October 23rd, 2010, Amy, the first time Amy's voice even appeared on this channel, she was pointing out a cloud in the sky that happened to look like a spaceship. Stuff we've all done. We we know that there are galactic beings that are amongst us. We understand that they can cloak themselves. So again, this was all harmless stuff. It always starts out as harmless stuff, right? In 2012, the Galactic Federation of Light YouTube channel changed its name to the Galactic Free Press. And again, for two more years, they were posting pretty benign, hippie-esque videos. 
But in 2014, things began to shift. In 2014, Amy started leaving messages on their YouTube page where she was talking to the ones in humanity who wanted to go home who wanted to go home into a five-dimensional reality. Now, as I said, she believed and she taught her cult that the 144,000, that, that very famous number mentioned in the Bible, was truly the amount of souls that were here on this earth that could go into the fifth dimension, which which kind of sounds a little bit like what the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. So you're going to see a lot of things coming from like the Abrahamic background of belief as well, which... um. Mm, that's a big red flag for me. Amy Carlson believed that not only was she Mother God and she was here to usher in the 144,000 to the fifth dimension, but she also believed that as Mother God, as the creatrix of all of life, she had come to Earth multiple times before. She believed that she was Marilyn Monroe. She believed that she was Pocahontas. She believed that she was Joan of Arc. She also believed that she was Jesus. And as she states, she remembers hanging on the cross. Well, as any of you guys know, his name wasn't Jesus. And if you have full memory of all your lives and you were him, then you would know your name was Yeshua. And you would also know that you were never crucified. That was Ishtar and Tammuz, not Yeshua. But anyway, there's lots of red flags. That's just one of them that I'm going to, I just have to put out there. So in 2014, she starts putting her message even more aggressively out there that again, she was the grand savior. It was all up to her. She was the mother of us all, the little, the literal creator of us all, as in like mother God, again, what she calls herself, what she's been calling herself since 2006. She goes on to teach that she created her, her own father, God, out of her heart and out of all the particles of the world around us as a twin flame of her. And then she sent Father God down into the underworld where he was just going to live until this time in our timeline. Now, her and Father God, according to, to Amy, they had been separated for a total of 19 billion years. Well, as I said, we're going to go through many father gods. And so I have to say, like, if Amy's correct, like, if she is truly mother god, 19 billion years is a long time to go without your spouse. So it could just be that she might have forgotten what he looked like. So Amy basically believed that she was here to call forth all of the souls home to the fifth dimension. She also believed that she and she alone was going to be the one to defeat the cabal and after she defeated the cabal and the 144,000 like real souls could move forward into the fifth dimension all of the other you know sons of bitches walking around we're just gonna have to go back into the karmic loop of regeneration and reincarnation including the cabal members now there is some truth to this i don't believe that only 144,000 are going to move up into the next dimension i think that's ridiculous i think the 144,000 are just people here who are basically fighting on the front lines for all of humanity but i do know from the law of one that there are some people that won't go forward with us because their soul will decide to go back to a third density playing field and that's totally fine doesn't mean they don't have a soul it just means that it's just not time for them to graduate yet. And because our souls are eternal, it doesn't really matter anyway. 2014 was also the year that her and Amrith White Eagle broke up. Now, within every good juicy breakup, there's always two sides to every story. Allegedly, Amrith White Eagle claimed that Amy Carlson wasn't stable. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. And she claimed that he was abusive. And she claimed that she was saved by a man named Miguel Lamboy. And Carlson believed that Miguel was actually Archangel Michael here in the flesh as well. Here's my question. Like, if all of these galactic beings that we all know about are all here in the flesh, then who's in the ga galactics? <laughs> Who's in the heavens? Like, is it empty up there if we're all down here on Earth? Like, I'm a little confused by that, but whatever. Enter Archangel Michael to save the day. He saved Amy Carlson from Amrith White Eagle, who claimed she was unstable. 
Carlson also said in 2014 when Miguel, or a.k.a. Archangel Michael, came in to save the day that they themselves, the two of them, triggered the event. I think you know what that means. Archangel Michael and Mother God were doing the uh, hokey pokey in the bedroom to trigger the event. And Miguel Lamboil will, will be a constant throughout this story. As you know from the beginning, according to the Rolling Stone magazine, he is the one that actually went to the police to say like, yo, my sugar mama cult leader girlfriend has been like dead in my house for a while. Come get the body, right? So that's the same guy. So here he is. He's entered the scene. They've triggered the event with their illustrious sex and we also see around this, she starts to generate followers, right? So before this, it's just been benign YouTube videos talking about spirituality. Well, now there's an actual following that's actually buying this bullshit, that she is literally God incarnate. In 2015, we have a new father God that enters the scene. His name is Andrew, but this father God only lasted a little bit under a year and it seems like he might actually be a whistleblower now from what i read and some videos that i watched he's actually later on going to be accused by another pseudo father god of stealing money which i don't think is true but there's obviously some bad blood there but by december of 2015 we see amy carlson and another man named rj having a pseudo mock spiritual wedding off the coast of clearwater florida yes that's correct i said clearwater florida the mecca of scientology now what i thought was hysterical is that miguel archangel michael the guy whose penis triggered the event is acting as the ring bearer at this pseudo mock wedding with rj and amy like how demoralizing would that be you guys like i'm sorry and aren't ring bearers supposed to be like little boys like i saw a video a while back of two grown men it was like their best friend's wedding and so the two grown men were actually the flower girls and i thought that was hysterical the video was hysterical but like th that was in fun and they were two grown men and it was their best buddy getting married and it was hysterical but like this was like serious like the man whose penis triggered the event with amy is now acting as the ring barrel bearer for amy to marry this pseudo marry this other dude off the coast of Florida where Scientology is. It's all just very strange. It's very strange. Now, even though she had this pseudo wedding with RJ, he never, alas, got the title of Father God. But he did stay with the cult for a very long time. In fact, he might still be there. In 2016, a man named Jonah is now Father God. And allegedly, there are videos of Jonah summoning Lucifer while Amy Carlson smokes a little doobie but those videos have since been taken down now as i said in the very beginning they built their business their organization off of youtube and they would film twice a day live stream on youtube and on facebook where they would sell a lot of their essential oils homemade soaps all that kind of stuff and try to generate funds to support the cult well, around this time in 2016, they really pushed it hardcore. So the few members that started to move to Colorado and move in with Amy and whatever Father God number she was on at that point and the little ring bearer and all that kind of stuff, they were really pushing to get enough money so the group could go out to Mount Shasta in California to pick up secret codes. Now, we do know, again, here's some truth. Mount Shasta is very potent. We know the Sophia Code was channeled out at Mount Shasta. We know that in Mount Shasta, there are entrances into Agartha. We know that Mount Shasta has been used by the nefarious ones as well as by the good ones. So there is something true here. Perhaps there are secret codes there. Are they going to be given to Amy Carlson? No. And this is around the time as they're fundraising that they start putting a lot of blame on both Andrew and Amrith White Eagle for stealing money, for trying to like derail 
what they're trying to do. Basically, it's an us versus them type of situation, which is also very scary and very much a cult tactic and us versus them. Yes, we do know that right now we are in a war. And yes, we do know that there are bad guys, but 99% of the human population falls on a scale of how awake they are. Just because somebody could be dead asleep to the truth doesn't mean they're bad people or it doesn't mean that they're going negative. They just don't, they're just not aware yet. And so that us versus them is something that's heavily played in a cult and something that I would very, I would highly suggest people look out for. In 2016, this is also when the cult officially changed its name to Love is One. And again, at this time, membership is picking up. At any given point, there could be between 12 and 20 people living at the house and on the property in Colorado. During this expansion of the cult, we have, alas, a new father god that enters the scene. And this is a man by the name of John. Now, John would later get demoted to father of the multiverse. And this consists of the Holy Trinity. So from Amy Carlson's perspective, there's mother God, there's father God, and there's father of the universe. Now, John didn't get bumped down to father of the universe until a man named Jason Castillo entered the scene. Now, Jason Castillo himself might still be in the cult. He got arrested a few times. Like, this wasn't a really good dude. He has a criminal background. And I know people can be rehabilitated and end up being really great members of society. But this guy, if you watch some of his videos, he's just a fucking dickhead. Like, he is... They're both kind of dickheads, actually. Now, once Jason Castillo took over the part of Father God, we do start to see a decline in the cult. And this is when we start to get a lot of allegations of this actually being a cult. Now, remember, it is deemed a 501c3 nonprofit. It's the same issue that things like Scientology have, where they're given this nonprofit status as a religious organization. But what they're doing is actually quite abusive. We started to have whistleblowers come out of the cult, including ex-father gods like Andrew and White Eagle. It's also interesting to note that one of the ex-members of this cult was Susie Hilfiger, as in Tommy Hilfiger's daughter, I believe. And she had promised the cult a bunch of money, which she never delivered. I mean, good for her if she got out before she handed over her inheritance, because like that would fucking suck. Around 2018, we also see this group start to use the military back channel, I can't say the name, as a tool to promote their organization. They have many, many channels on Telegram where they actually use the letter Q to promote themselves through this movement of the military back channel. And in fact, Amy Carlson at one point said that Trump was her father. Now, I'm not quite sure if she meant like in a past life or if she meant like in this life, like he was like, maybe she was like his secret love child. And that's why she was like mother God. If, if she believed he was his father in a past life, then I guess that would be really hard to prove otherwise. But if I'm kind of confused on that because different sources say different things. But they definitely like latched on to this military back channel movement, which, yes, because a lot of what they believed in were things that we all know to be true, except... They were doing it and spinning it in a very nefarious way. Well, let's go through some of the rules you have to follow if you want to be in this cult. For starters, you are sleep deprived. And this is very common. This is very common amongst high control organizations. The members of the cult only get four hours of sleep. And there are some videos that I watched on their channel of many members claiming to only get two hours of sleep. And they say that when they need more sleep, they consider themselves to basically basically be like babies, that they're here on a cause and poor, poor mother God, she, you know, she's doing all this for us. She created us. She's here to save us. And we need to work hard to save her and get on that Instagram get on that Facebook, get on that YouTube and get her some money because that's another thing too. All of the money that's being raised through this 501c3 nonprofit is going uh, straight 
to Amy Carlson. Now, this next rule I thought was fucking hysterical. Men, men, you have to pee sitting down. Yep, you want to be a part of Love is One cult? You can't pee standing up. You got to sit down on the toilet. Push your pee-pee down and pee like a girl. Why? Well, because Amy Carlson believes that when a man pees standing up, he makes the toilet messy like urine gets everywhere. Now, I don't know what kind of men Amy Carlson is dating. Obviously, quite a few since she's had many father gods. But uh, not to brag or anything, but I've dated quite a few men too, Amy Carlson. And <laughs> I've never had a problem with that. I've lived, again, not to brag or anything, but I've lived with quite a few men. Quite, quite a few men. And I'm the one that cleans the toilets most of the time. I don't cook, but I can clean and I can do laundry. So I don't mind. I'll, I will be the one to clean the toilets. None of the men that I've ever lived with or been romantic with have ever had an issue of getting their urine outside of the toilet. They're pretty good. By the time they're grown-ass adults who are mature enough to live with a woman and share a life with a woman, they can aim pretty well. They know how to hit the target pretty well. And if I walked in on my boyfriend sitting down to pee, I don't, I think I, <laughs> that's not really a turn on. So I don't know, again, like, are these father gods just blind and they're like, are they playing with their wieners like a hose when they're, I don't know what's happening, but and I, I get that like teenage boys do that and perhaps little kids do that. But grown ass men that I know don't leave a mess behind when they go pee. In my opinion, this is just a way for her to have dominance over the men. Oh, and this one's hysterical too. You can't have sex or have any type of romantic relationship unless you are assigned a twin flame by Amy. So basically, she's kind of like the madam. She's the one like being you and you. You are twin flames, and now you're going to go sleep together. I can't do that. And listen, like, no, it's not anybody else's. Nobody else can tell you who your twin flame is. You're on that journey. You got to figure it out with the other half of you. Okay. And like, I just, oh, God, like, huh? like, what if you were, okay. So, like, what if you were, you joined this cult and like, you get there and she assigns you to go like go boink some guy that you're disgusted by like huh? like i just can't like oh my god oh my god do not let anybody else tell you who you can or cannot boink that is extremely private and that is between you and the person you're boinking don't ever let somebody else get involved in that. There's also no drugs or alcohol, which could seem like a pretty reasonable rule if it's a religious organization. But the only exception to this rule is Amy and Jason. In fact, Amy herself, as stated by many people, is a raging alcoholic. She openly drinks like crazy in front of all of her peasants, her children, her followers. She's often seen in many videos also smoking joints, hitting a bong, all sorts of fun stuff that her uh, followers do not get to partake in. She also limits your food intake but beca because Amy says that when we transfer into the fifth dimension that our bodies will not need as much sleep and as much food. So if we're really doing our spiritual work, we'll start to not need food anyway. Now this I call bullshit because we know, and there's a story, and I'm hoping that I can get Kelly Thiel on the show soon from Nexium because Keith Ranieri had them on a 500 calorie a day diet. And as Kelly says very eloquently, your body, your body needs a lot of energy to do what it does. So first of all, the, the main base energy for your body is your body needs energy to run the heart, run the kidneys, run the liver, run the digestive system, just the basic maintenance of your body. It takes X amount of calories. Now you add on top of that things like working, just going to work, focusing, thinking, doing your reports, making phone calls, 
driving. Um, and then you add on top of that exercise. Your body needs a lot more food than just this limited amount for you to survive. Now with the Nexium cult, the 500 calories that they were given literally was just enough to keep them alive. They couldn't think properly. And that's what that's what we're seeing here with this with this dominance over how much sleep they get over how much they eat over who they can and can't boink over how they pee how they urinate in the toilet there there's a loss of control over a loss of autonomy a loss of sovereignty over yourself and again especially with the food intake and the limited sleep it's going to start messing with your cognitive abilities and that's why a lot of times people will say if you look at cults the cult members have a certain gaze in their eyes and it's because there's been deprivation intentionally so they can't think properly because if you're able to think properly you're probably not going to be in the situation that you're in in this organization you absolutely cannot have your own money once in fact once you get to the the organization you have to give over everything you have to the organization aka to amy you also have to disconnect from all of your family and friends this again is another huge red flag a lot of high control organizations practice disconnection or shunning this also requires many people who join this organization to abandon their children and leave them behind you obviously don't have any possessions so you don't you can't even have a personal cell phone to be able to keep in touch with your loved ones but amy has a cell phone Part of her little slush fund of fundraising is for her to be able to buy more games on her cell phone. And as the cult will tell you, it's because by using these games from the game app on your phone is her actually defeating the cabal. I mean, this takes a lot of mental gymnastics to truly believe that this woman is the incarnation of God. Now, on top of this, because this, this group has made its name on YouTube and, and gathered its, its followers on YouTube, there are many videos where you can see Amy screaming, shouting abusive things at her followers, abusing children and animals. The cult members are also uh, forced to wear certain colors on certain days pertaining to whatever chakra she's focusing on at the moment, which also gives up. I mean, I know in a lot of uh, businesses and schools, there's a uniform, but if you work in a business where you have to wear a uniform or a school where you're wearing a uniform, you're only wearing that uniform while you're working or at school, right? When you go home, you can put your clothes back on and be you, right? It, it, but in this organization, you're not you anymore. You're a part of Amy. You don't even have the choice to pick what hell you don't you don't even have you don't even have the choice to pick who you're gonna boink or how you're gonna fucking pee. <laughs> Losing the right to pick your clothes for the day is very far down on that list of of personal choices when you're looking at someone who's literally telling you who to spread your legs for. Now, if a cult member or a member of the organization seems to be low vibrational on a day of course this decision made by amy whether you're low vibrational or not they're sent to desolation road and this is how from what i understand this is kind of how the cult got its notoriety of being potentially being a cult um is because there was a man who was sent to desolation road with no clothes on in the middle of the freaking forest so if you guys are not from the united states or if you've never been to colorado crestone colorado that is wilderness like colorado is beautiful but that's the rock i mean this is like dangerous to be out in the middle of nowhere by yourself in these conditions especially if you're someone who's not from colorado and you just kind of move there to join this like hippy dippy cult that you think could be cool you know you kind of want a piece sitting down if you're a man and so you join this cult and this one man was found wondering out of his mind butt ass naked with like cactus needles up his foot by locals he had, he had left his family and his like six-figure job 
to join this organization. And that's what I'm talking about, you guys, when I talk about this great awakening, how even through this great awakening, there are danger signs everywhere for high controlled organizations. So we've got this dude, and I'm not going to say his name. I thought about going deeper into the story, but I do want to protect his privacy and his family's privacy. If you want to know more about it, there are many articles about it. But but basically, let's just let's just put this into perspective. And I'm not saying this is exactly how we felt, but I just kind of want to use this as an example. Here you are. You're a middle-aged man. You've got a wife. You've got kids. You work in corporate America or corporate England or whatever country you're from. You're making six figures a year. Of course, you probably have bills out the wazoo. What more money, more problems. You got tuition for your kids. You got to buy, pay for braces. You got to pay for all the sports. It's you're on this hamster wheel of like Monday through Friday working, weekends off. You're getting older. Your body's changing. You're going through these questionings of life. And then all of a sudden, boom, you wake up. You wake up, you realize that the matrix that you've been thriving in is not what you thought it was, which all of us have been in this situation, hence why you're watching me on YouTube, hence why, why I'm even on, on YouTube. We realize that there are this group of controllers that have been nefariously fucking with us for a very long time. We start to realize that our world isn't what we think it is. We start to realize that these harmless religions that we've been brought up and raised in are part of this horrific evil that's been doing horrifically evil things to children you you go holy shit and then you start to realize especially if you're like an anglican american you start to realize that the bible is the furthest thing from the word of god because it's been edited and made up and you have these over 700 books that's been hidden and they all talk about a mother god and they all talk about aliens and all of a sudden you're not even sure if the world is round anymore and so you're going through this deconstruction process where you're starting to see the truth through the illusion and then you start to get desperate because you go holy shit i've got to tell my friends and family what i've discovered and you start to show them the military back channel. You start to show them what you found in research and they call you crazy. So you're going through the motions of life. M many of you watching can obviously very much relate to this. You're going through the motions of life and you're losing friends. You don't feel close to anyone anymore. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, you're on YouTube as all of us were, how you found me. And you find this group. They're all really good looking young people and they're saying the same things that you have found to be true as well. And then they're saying that God is here on earth and her name is Amy Carlson and she can save you. She can take you into the fifth dimension. Yeah, we're going into the fifth dimension. But you as a new person to this whole great awakening are desperate. You're desperate for friends who don't think you're crazy. You're desperate for community. So desperate, in fact, that you're willing to leave behind your children, your wife, your community, your job, to move to Colorado, to give up everything you own to Amy, just to feel like you're a part of something just to feel like you have community where you can talk about these things. Do you understand how this works? Do you see what I'm saying? All these things that they talk about with aliens, with the cabal, with Trump, with, that's all true. We know that's true. But what isn't true is that Amy Carlson is the one and only God. We're all fractals of God, all of us. We do need teachers. We absolutely need teachers. We need guides. We need mentors. We don't need control. We've already had controllers. Why do we want another one? So this one guy gets sent to Desolation Road in the middle of nowhere, Colorado, the wild, wild west, naked, because all of a sudden, Amy Carlson deemed that he was low vibrational. Now, what does this mean? I don't know. It could mean that she just doesn't like you that day. And so she wants to punish you. It could mean that maybe you questioned something that she said. Maybe you peed standing up instead of sitting down. 
who knows? But you get put, you get sent out and exiled. Now, remember, you've already cut your whole family off. You don't have a cell phone anymore or access to your own email to contact anyone. So now you're out in the fucking wild, wild west of Colorado with no clothes on until Amy Carlson deems that your vibration is high enough to come back into the community. Pretty scary, isn't it? There's also another game that they like to play on YouTube, which is completely demoralizing. And this game is called Find the Whore. At this moment, Amy will claim that one of the females in the group is carrying Lilith energy. And the other group member members have to find the whore. What this means is that there is a woman in the group that Amy is obviously threatened by. And I bet you it might not be her energy that she's threatened by. It might just be that maybe she's pretty. Or maybe certain men like her. Maybe she's funny. And so Amy will set out to demoralize these women by making them out to be whores and chastised by the other members of the group in front of the whole world on the internet. The group members also ask for people like you and me to purchase what they call spiritual surgeries from Amy. This is $88.88. Now, in these spiritual surgeries, Amy claims that she can go into your body or your brain and cut off, off all of these negative attachments. Now, I have a lot to say about this. Yes, there are attachments. Yes, there are people who know how to remove these attachments. But, however, red flag here. If you ask a healer to help you remove attachments, you have to participate too. The only way that something can attach to you is through your consent. And nefarious attachments use your wounds, your shadow side, where you struggle as your consent. Because where you struggle, whether that's with jealousy or abandonment or sorrow, these are things that you need to work on. And if you don't work on them, then these things can attach because that vibrational frequency is matching the frequency of the attachment. Now, someone can come and remove that attachment but that attachment is just going to come right back unless you actually deal with a real problem. So do not give your money to someone who claims that they can remove all this stuff for you. You have to also participate in this as well. Now, in 2020, the group moved themselves to Hawaii. And when they were in Hawaii, they were not greeted with a lot of love and respect from the locals. And this is because Amy made the mistake of claiming to be a Hawaiian goddess named Pele. Now, again, remember, Amy has claimed that she was uh, Joan of Arc, Pocahontas, Jesus. I think she also claimed to be like Cleopatra, Marilyn Monroe, all the big ones. So like if there is a big name out there, Amy was it, right? And so she got to Hawaii and she claimed to be the incarnation of Pele. And of course, the tribal people of Hawaii, rightly so, were like, get the fuck out of here, lady. Like, no, you're not. And so they started majorly protesting at the compound of the cult. So much so that there were um, incidents of vandalization where rocks were being thrown through the car's windows, all sorts of stuff. And they were also pitching little fires, little driftwood fires around the property and all the Hawaiians were gathered around doing Hawaiian prayers and chants. They were literally ex doing an exorcism to get this crazy bitch off of their island. I wish they could have done something to like try to help the followers, but followers of these cults can't be helped unless they want to be helped, right? They have to make that decision, but they definitely wanted Amy out. It got so bad that the mayor had to come in and politely ask them to leave. He had to tell them that he can't 
assure their safety. It's just too much. It's out of his hands. It's getting vigilante. And so they did finally leave and go back to Colorado. Now, around this time, Amy herself, her health was deteriorating. And and it's it's kind of strange. Like, I don't really know what happened, like when her sickness started, but you can definitely tell if you look back at videos she's getting thinner and thinner and thinner but i don't know like what's the craziness setting in or what's the actual physical health like i know the two are definitely linked amy said that she herself had cancer but a lot of people say no her liver was failing because she was such a raging alcoholic now it was believed by the group that amy was her physical body was dying because of all of the um, corruption and the pollution of being here in a third density planet. Amy herself also claimed that she had had over 500 assassination attempts, like same girl. I think all of us on YouTube get a few death threats here and there. Like, girl, I feel you on that one. Like, no, I never thought I would be in contact with the military, but say a few things on YouTube that the fundamentalist Christians don't like. And then that cult of Christianity starts coming after you. So I, I, Amy, I can, I can feel you on that. But anyway, the group thought that Amy's body was physically giving out because of the intensity of this planet. And, you know, Amy being God, she was just too good for this world. But if she's God, then she created this world. So, and if she can heal all these other people, why can't she heal herself? I I got some questions, like shit's not adding up. Now, Amy was often quoted as saying is that if you're not with me, then you're against me. Basically, like, if you don't follow me, you're fucked and you're going to burn in hell, just like all the other Christian preachers in the Southeast say. But nonetheless, it was kind of scary uh, listening to some of the audio from around this time when Amy was dying. Because again, remember, the belief of this cult was that Amy was here to defeat the Cabal. And Amy herself was going to usher in the 144,000 into the fifth dimension. And so what happens then if Amy dies? And you can kind of see where maybe another Jonestown would potentially happen in this case. And we hear some talk from some cult members that if Amy were to pass away, then her children, her members were obligated to lay down their lives to join her. This reminded me a lot of Scientology. In Scientology, they call it drop the body. Again, this could have very easily turned into another Jonestown or a Heaven's Gate. But thank God it didn't. Thank God it didn't. Nobody that I'm aware of gave up their life because Amy Carlson passed away. We know that Amy Carlson passed away in April of 2021. We don't know the date or the time. We know that she passed away in California, but her body was moved back to her home in Colorado where her body was mummified and put up as a shrine. Now it's it's pretty hazy to me at this time what her followers believe about this like did they believe in a resurrection i would rather them believe in a resurrection than believe they have to join her i mean at least they're not hurting themselves now miguel his name was on the property the deed for the property and as you heard from the rolling stones article in the beginning of this this episode He did eventually go down to the police and say, yo, there's a dead body in my house. And of course, if you read the full article, which I will list in the description box below, you can definitely tell there were some crazy things in the house. I I probably smelled awful. They had sage lit everywhere. And I just don't know what was going through their mind with a decomposing body of this woman they thought was God. I mean, maybe... And, and this just shows you the power of the mind, the mental bondage, right? Because I guarantee you that even though Amy is dead, that's just her body, they're probably still all following the rules. 
I mean, if you go back and look at their YouTube page, they're still putting videos up. They're probably still only getting four hours of sleep, still limiting their food intake. The men are probably still sitting down to pee. You know, they're probably not having relations unless it's with the person that Amy thought was their twin. And that's just, again, the mental bondage. But if they think that maybe Amy's going to be res resurrected and come back, then I guess they think they better be on their P's and Q's or mind their P's and Q's so that they can actually go into the fifth dimension. Now, as the article stated, some of the cult members were arrested for child abuse and for moving a corpse across state lines, but the, the, the charges were dropped. And I don't know specifically why the charges were dropped. Perhaps the DA had mercy on these people because they had been so heavily brainwashed. Now, once again, I don't know what's going to come of this organization. Are they just going to slowly dismantle themselves or maybe do they have the potential to reinvent themselves? to kind of join us here on the side of light where they realize that it's not up to a lady or a man to determine their fate in the afterworld, but it's up to them. It's up to them, their soul's journey. They are their own saviors. Maybe they will realize that maybe the stuff they learned about what's going on out there is true, but what's really important is what's happening inside. But regardless, we look at all these people who get tied up in these high control organizations. They all look to be wonderful, beautiful people who were just led astray. And so it is my hope that anybody who is tied up in any type of high control situation finds their way out. And it is my hope that each of you watching right now take this story as a buyer beware story. As I've said many times, don't give your power to anyone. Do your own research. Don't give your power to me. Don't give your power to any tarot card reader. Don't lionize anyone. If you feel like you have to lionize or worship or praise someone you see on a YouTube channel, then that's a red flag that there's something wrong. Not with you, but with the situation. Take your power back. You are a fractal of God. You are the storm. No one on YouTube, and I'm saying YouTube because love of one, love is one started on YouTube. No one on YouTube is any better than you are. No one. Yes, you need a teacher. Yes, you need a mentor. Yes, you need a good healer to help you to help you heal yourself, to help you break your own chains. Don't allow anyone to tell you who you can have a sexual relationship with. Don't give your possessions up to anyone. Don't disconnect from your family and your friends just because they're, they believe differently than you do. We're all just walking each other home. We are all fractals of God. Now, in closing, I do want to hear your opinion. Please be careful with the words that you use in your comments because we are watched by the controllers on YouTube. And I might have to delete some comments if there are some trigger words. Um, you can uh, write trigger words by maybe replacing a letter with a number or something. That's what I do. Um, you know, just so the algorithms don't pick it up. But I want to know, do you think that Amy was just a crazy woman who found the information that we all found and went a little cuckoo? Or do you think that she um, was a psyop created by the nefarious players? I do hope that Amy's children, her three, ch I mean, maybe it was lucky that she left her three children. I know that's awful to say, like everyone deserves to have a mom. But if your mom's Amy Carlson, maybe it's better that you have a dad that acts as both of those. I don't know. I do wish her children well. I hope that they're healthy and happy. From what I understand from interviews, her children did not have a relationship with her and thought she was batshit crazy. Um, I know her family, her sisters, her mom thought she was crazy. I will put a link to the Dr. Phil episode down in the description box below where they talk about that. But I want to hear your opinions down in the comment section as well. And also, like, what are your opinions on the, the basis of me sharing these stories is so that we know what to look out for. Um, have you found yourself 
slipping into this cult mentality or in any of these? Have you found yourself like giving up yourself in order to feel accepted by a group? Like where, what's your experience with that? Let me know. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon.